from the Santa Clara Convention Center. This is SiliconAngle.tv's exclusive coverage of Hitachi Information Forum 2010. Now, inside the queue from SiliconAngle.tv. We're back at SiliconAngle.com's continuous coverage of Silicon Valley technology and beyond. We're here inside the cube with Mickey Sandorfi from Hitachi Data Systems, and we're at Ground Zero in Silicon Valley where Hitachi's uh, unleashing new vision, actually extended vision for you guys, new for me to hear and others to hear around uh, the cloud, data, data at the center of innovation, but also at scale. They have huge customers, huge scale, and new demands that they're addressing. And uh, Mickey is in the uh, chief strategist officer for the cloud. And uh, during the keynote, your CEO, who was on the Cube earlier, talked about the content cloud. Uh, but just first, tell us, really, from a st chief strategist standpoint, what's happening with Hitachi? Just take us through quickly, what's changed for folks out there who want to see the new picture of, of Hitachi right now? Sure. And I think you know what what you heard from Jack is that information really is the foundation for not just a data center but for all business moving forward. So it's it's the data that we're processing, it's what we're actually revenueing, uh, it's the infrastructure now, which is you know virtualized server infrastructure, it's just other forms of information. So at the foundation, when we talk about cloud, it really is across all of those different areas. How do you build infrastructures that become really foundational in your data center? that allow you to leverage virtualization as a way to get to your information where you need it, when you need it. He talked about content cloud. I mean, he talked about a lot of things. We, we recapped that earlier, but one thing that jumped out at me was a couple things. One was the notion of um, new demands on the business, future requirements, unstructured data. Mm -hmm. But he talked about applications and how applications need to free up from the data, and he referenced this in, in what he called the content cloud. So take us through, what is the content cloud? What's the definition of the content cloud, and what does it apply to? So the content cloud is how do you build a pool of information and leverage that pool of information as your business grows, as, as your own life grows. He used healthcare and, and life sciences as a couple of examples there. And part of that is, uh, you know, you feed information into this, into this almost black hole today where it just stores the bits. But that's not good enough. So you talk about, you know, PowerPoints that you might create or Word documents or this video. Uh, ten years from now, you want to find that information. How do you leverage that and, in fact, use something uh, or do something with that information in the future? So our vision is let's create an intelligent content core, which does become the cloud. An ability to not only store the information or retrieve the information, but add intelligence on top of it. The ability to find that content, the ability to reuse that content out of the context that it was created, perhaps. So, you know, this, this video stream, for example, 10 years from, out, from now I might want to take a clip, and who knows what we have in terms of a new high-def broadcast. Yeah, I could be President of the United States, and I could, you know, <laughs> have some you know, dirt on me from when I was on the cube. Absolutely, so we <laughs> want to be able to find that, we want to be able to take those juicy clips uh, and reuse them. I know, the, the, the governor, governor race in California using all kinds of clips against uh, oh, that's amazing, know, uh, Carly Farina, clips from her sound bites as an HB person. You can see the high def wasn't around no, then. No. Know, <laughs> you know, but, so, <laughs> but, but, but content clouds, we resonate with that because we do the content business, but what does it mean for application? What does it mean for the market? I mean, and users. Is it a user application or is it just a whole other paradigm? Is it definitely different? It's not a user, it's not a corporation, it's what do you do with information, how do you make it valuable? So for example, information that might be a healthcare record is locked into a healthcare system today. And Jack's point was, hey, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, those records have to persist. Hopefully I'm going to be around in 20 years. I'd like that information that was collected today and a checkup I might have with my doctor become useful to me 20 years from now. How does that work today? I mean, like, so compare and contrast, you know, old way and this new way. Yeah, so, so where we are today is that information is very tightly coupled and locked into an application that creates it. And where we're seeing that is just look at something as mundane as word processing. Um, over the last 20 years, how many different word processors have come and gone? each of which has its own proprietary format of information. Mm -hmm. So now if I wanted to get a document that I created 20 years ago with WordPerfect, how do I do that? It's in a, a format where I have to use that application to get my information back. So the idea of a content cloud is you start to store information in a way that makes it portable outside of that application. So if it's not WordPerfect, it's Microsoft Word or it's something else in the future, I have that information available to me outside of the context of that app. 
So last week at Oracle Open World, there was sort of an interesting discourse going on. Allison stood up and on Sunday night introduced the Exologic, you know, cloud in a God box. I call it the God box. <laughs> and then the next day, Mark Benioff of Salesforce.com said, Larry just doesn't get it. The cloud doesn't come in a box. And then on Wednesday, of course, Ellison has to have the last word. He says, no, actually, you know, Benioff doesn't get it. What do you think Salesforce.com runs on? It runs on 1,500 Dell servers. Those are boxes, right? So what's your take on that? Is, is, is cloud run in a box? Well, I think you're being a little bit too pedantic when you look at that. Um, of course, <laughs> you have a computing infrastructure that has to run on Got some boxes, computing infrastructure, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So the idea is how do you disassociate the information, which is the valuable piece, from the hardware and the underpinning software that it runs on. And that's really what we're focused on. How do you free that information so it can actually supersede the infrastructure piece? So I don't care if it's a box in your private data center and you call it a private cloud, or if you have it in a hosting facility somewhere and it's a public cloud, or you combine the two together, it's a hybrid cloud. What you're really talking about is the information. How do you have portability of that information? So what we talked about today with VSP is how do you free that information? How do you make it portable across the physical asset? That's one of the under, uh, underlying enabling features that you need in order to get you to that vision of a content cloud where it really is information portability. I don't care about the infrastructure anymore. I care about the asset and that asset is my information. You know, that's a that's interesting, John. I mean, it's an information management centric vision. I, I get the sense that the, the whole Oracle you know, box vision is is legacy. It's outdated. Oh, it's closed. Oracle it's is a completely different animal. I mean, they should have called it closed world. <laughs> Oracle closed <laughs> world. Um, yeah. You know, Oracle's not open. You guys have an open vision, which you talked about, but Oracle's closed. It, their view of the app is their app. Right. And they look at the customer and says, hey, you run Oracle. You, you know, we don't think, we dare to rip, rip in my place. They don't really do that. Their customers are solid and uh, they're not going to lose their customers. So they don't really care. You know, it's interesting because the, the folks who are entering the workforce now are people who grew up in the Facebooks and in, in the Yahoos and the Googles, right? They don't know the legacy of having a, a piece of machinery on your desk with an application that's tied to that piece of machinery. So I think that nature, that, that uh, you know, conduct is starting to work its way into yeah, the, the, the bloated workforce today. The bloated PC chained to your desk. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, you know, we, we heard a couple of, you know, other presenters in there, you know, Microsoft, for example, talking about information everywhere, and we align to that. Yeah. I don't care if it's on your iPhone or on your Blackberry or on your iPad or on your desktop or on your laptop. You expect that information to be freely accessible no matter where you are. So that's an exact, you know, depiction of outside-of-the-box thinking. It mm -hmm. really isn't the box anymore. It's the information. How do you free it and how do you leverage it for, for better? No. So he mentioned automation, too, which we all know automation and configuration management. Automating those complexities of real right. job one um, so he talked about tiering is tiering something that is automated today because you can have kind of cloud you know content cloud but you got to build boxes and put them in yeah. you know, okay yeah. old data needs to be ported over to different set of disks or lower cost disks right. so so costs obviously are, are a big driver in all this I mean storage is not going away it's a tsunami of data coming down the marketplace. Yeah. Is tiering that answer, or is that only one element of it? it it's a step on a, a continuum of steps. So what we have just introduced is the ability to do that in a far more automated way than anybody else offers today. And to do it, what we call scale deep, the three Ds of scaling up, out, and deep. So the deep part, when you talk about cloud, is especially important. We're going in a transition right now from you know terabytes to petabytes. That's already happened. We're going from petabytes to exabytes. In the next five years, we're going to be talking about the exabyte data center, not the petabyte data center. So to manage the cost of that, just the, the mundane things yeah. about getting the information there and managing the life cycle of that information, you have to have sophisticated automated tools in the infrastructure. It can't be an application. It has to be baked into that infrastructure so you can get information mobility so you can lower the cost, so you mm -hmm. can put the right information at the right place at the right time, and that it is fully automated. You, we talked about acquisitions. Um, you know, Jack didn't want to address it. You know, he did the old you know CEO thing where he said, "Oh no, we're gonna you know we, we may buy if we need it, but we don't need it." You're an acquisition, thing, right? You know? Is that was that part yeah. of? Were you part of the archive? Uh, no, nope, nope, no, okay. Not. But yeah, but a lot was, of what you yeah. worry about was part of an acquisition. It right? was. Yeah. Sorry, John. Go ahead. Yeah, well, that, well, that's the thing. I mean, this is a big market. You guys are a big player. You're a whale in the space on the high end. You, you're interfacing with huge install based customers. Mm -hmm. You know, that startups would like to get a piece of that action. Are there opportunities for new companies? When I say startups, I don't mean like three guys in the garage. It could be three guys in the garage, but it could be, you know, Series A, B funded company, Silicon Valley or somewhere else who has a product and needs to pivot and work on things. Is there anything that you see that are white spaces that are opportunities for uh, startups? 
there are huge opportunities for, for a number of companies. So whether you're a startup or a big company that's you know, shifting directions, we work with all of those. Um, we tend to look at, you know, first, what is our vision of where things are going? I think Jack did a very, very good job articulating that. He did, yep. Now, of course, to line up execution to that vision, there are many, many steps that we have to take and many different pieces that we have to put together and to deliver, realize that and vision. And deliver the product. Absolutely. So a lot of those technologies are fundamental to Hitachi. We're a huge company. We have a lot of uh, research and development that we do ourselves. But, of course, we can't solve all the, all the problems ourselves. So that's absolutely where we look at. Um, you know, a wide range of partners in the ecosystem that can complement or in some cases become a more permanent part of what we're doing in that, you know, story from any, here to there. Are there any particular areas you can point to or talk about publicly that you say, hey, you know, Hitachi really would love this area to be developed faster or, you know, something in this area. Can you, is there anything you can share? Or Probably not, a, not in this forum, but certainly what we're looking at is along that line of how do we get from a data view to an information view? transforming the data center from the data center to the information center because it really is about information. So where our minds are is how do you manage that information? How do you promote that information? How do you repurpose that information? How do you find that information? So it's really taking a centric view around not data, not the infrastructure, but it's the information, and we're building our path to getting to that. Where does classification fit into that whole thing? I mean, it's, it's kind of been the holy grail of information management is, hmm. is automating classification at the point of creation. Is that... Is that, a, is that a barrier? Is it going to be an enabler? What's your angle on that? I think this is kind of human nature, right? So if you looked at, you know, kind of the top-down information classification systems, I think a lot in the industry would say it was an abysmal failure. And the reason yeah. for that is, you know, people don't think like computers, right? right? When I create a document, I have no idea how important it's going to be 10 years from now. Only time will tell me how important it was. So that's why I really take this infrastructure up view. We have to provide these tools, not just for information that was placed in a very rigid classification system, but for any digitally created content, whether it's rich media, whether it's structured media, it doesn't matter. Infrastructure up. So we're basically building that view of all the enablers, all the virtualization technology. So I'm not virtualizing a box anymore. I'm virtualizing all of your information assets. And with that, I can start to put more and more intelligence on top of it. And I can do things like classification. I can do things like repurposing or reuse of information for different business. So infrastructure has been a barrier there. And, and it you're absolutely to remove has those barriers. Yeah, right? yeah. So what do we we would talk about? I mean, one of the themes is no silos, right? Mm -hmm. And from a Hitachi perspective, we've always built that vision of we have an integrated strategy with no silos, and we're one of the few vendors out there that actually promotes that and can deliver that today. What we did today with VSP is a next step in executing against that vision. It's again taking the technology that we've you know, really hardened in some of the largest enterprises and adding that additional uh, dimension of scalability to it. Can you talk a little bit about your, your role as a strategist and within Hitachi, which is a different culture, mm -hmm. you know, than the normal Silicon Valley companies, uh, how your um, insights flow through to actual product? Sure. So H Hitachi Data Systems has undergone quite a transformation over the last five to seven years. So under the leadership of Jack and, and folks like Brian and John, we've really taken it from a, okay, we're just going to sell what Hitachi builds mentality, which is what, you know, I think our competition would have, you know, pegged us as, and in many cases still do. But we've really taken that to really an innovator in the industry. Taking our own technologies, developing them, you talked about the Archivist acquisition, that's our content platform now. Invested strongly into that, that becomes a big piece of what we're doing. Looking at things like our recent acquisition of Parasqu uh, Parascale, providing another element of how do we move information in and out of that content cloud. And then what we look at is, well, how do we leverage some of our core capabilities across many different Hitachi products? So for example, our server uh, platforms. Of course, you talk about needing to run this thing on a box. You have to run it on a box. So we're taking some of the core technologies that we've developed over many years in Japan, and we're starting to bring those to the global stage. So LPAR technology that you would have on a mainframe providing very secure computing environments in the open systems world that integrate into that information layer. So my job is really to act as a bridge from what we're doing in the global stage um, outside of Japan and really project forward what we need to be investing in 
across the different products that will converge into that information cloud. So you're a dot connector with a crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> Soothsayer. <laughs> so, um, virtualization is obviously really hyped up and, and it's delivering, but there's two camps. There's people who are afraid of virtualization and right. ones that are absolutely intoxicated by virtualization. Yeah. And, and the guys who are intoxicated by virtualization are the, are the tech geeks. Wow, we could do things completely different. What, what, how do you see, what's your angle on those two camps? Is it real? Um, and uh, how would you say, what are those new opportunities that virtualization is enabling? Well, you know, there are really, you're right, there are two camps, the haves and the have-nots, right? Um, so the, the ones who have embraced virtualization, whether it be storage, server, networks, or all of the above, have realized a significant advantage in doing that. And it's not just cost reduction, it's also agility to the business. Um, the ones who are kind of afraid to do that, it's okay. You know, this is a continuum. You don't have to jump into the deep end of the pool. So our view is we can provide an infrastructure where you can start kind of as you are today and then kind of walk down that path to a more and more virtualized infrastructure over time as you, your company, and your different, you know, uh, regulatory requirements perhaps allow you to. Um, there is no one right choice. Now, we firmly believe that, you know, a fully virtualized infrastructure is where you have to get. Yeah. And in a way, it's kind of a, a throwback way back to the mainframes, right? The mainframes were fully virtualized. There was no notion of my data is in this piece of storage. It took care of all of that. Everybody trusted mainframes to run their most critical applications, and they still do today. Yeah. What's happening is that technology is, is permeating everything that we do in computing And distributed, now. completely distributed and embedded. That's right. In everything. Yeah, great. So, so you guys developing, it's kind of the content mainframe? Is that how we should be thinking <laughs> about this? So, so mainframe, I don't think, has, has the right connotation to it. You would think of I mean, mainframe as very monolithic, right? Well, you well, know, uh, uh, Paul Moritz says they're developing the software mainframe. Right. Uh, so, no, not meaning a pejorative, but mainframe to me the is a very powerful is the and virtualized and yeah. So know, there are never connotations and denotations, and right? The so, connotations yeah. around security and robustness and reliability mm -hmm. and scale, those are absolutely the right connotations to have when you when you use mainframe with what we're doing with information cloud. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Great. All right, we're Great. here with Mickey Sandorfi, uh, live at the Cube at the Hitachi information explosion <laughs> here. This has just been an unbelievable day. Congratulations on the announcement. Thank you very much. And, uh, okay, really, really impressive. Yeah, Intel. Uh, that's in right. The queue. Uh, we haven't had Intel in the queue. David yet. Tui, uh, 